Hi, it's Tuesday, January the 3rd, and I continue to read and wonder my way through Paul's letter to the church in Corinth, the first letter. Uh, today it's 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 12 to 26. We started uh, chapter 12 yesterday, and Paul asserted that there are many gifts um, and one spirit, many ways of service, one Lord. Um, he spoke passionately about the diversity of gifts within the community and how those all come together uh, in the one spirit, one God. Uh, again, he's pushing the idea of, of unity, but also recognizing that we are all different. And um, yeah, we wondered about that a little bit yesterday. And today I think he's going to, well, I know he's going to pick up on that theme and uh, even go a little further. So let's see whether a little further works for us. So here it is. It's 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 12 to 26. For just as the one, just as the body is one and has many members, and all the members of the body, though many, are one body, so it is with Christ. For in the one spirit we were all baptized into one body, Jews or Greeks, slaves or free, and we were all made to drink of one spirit. Indeed, the body does not consist of one member, but of many. If the foot were to say, because I'm not a hand, I do not belong to the body, well, that would not make it any less a part of the body. And if the ear would say, because I'm not an eye, I don't belong to the body, well, that would not make it any less a part of the body. If the whole body were an eye, where would the hearing be? If the whole body were hearing, then where would the sense of smell be? But as it is, God arranged the members in the body, each one of them, as he chose. If all were a single member, where would the body be? As it is, there are many members, yet one body. The eye cannot say to the hand, I have no need of you. Nor again, the head to the feet, I have no need of you. On the contrary, the members of the body that seem to be weaker are indispensable. And those members of the body that we think less honorable, we clothe with great honor. And our less respectable members are treated with greater respect. Whereas our more respectable members do not need this. But God has so arranged the body, giving the greater honor to the inferior member, that there may be no dissension within the body, but the members may have the same care for one another. If one member suffers, all suffer together with it. If one member is honored, all rejoice together with it. <sighs> so, yeah, Paul goes a little further. Um, moving from the diversity, diversity of gifts to recognize that the body has many parts and recognizing us as the body of Christ, we all have, we all have different parts. We are all different parts and, and we can't say, well, I, I'm the preacher. I have no need of the feet. Um, they all fit together. The, the, the preacher needs the administrator. The administrator needs the preacher, but they both need the musician, the musician needs the reader, the reader needs the learner, the learner needs the person who, who tidies the room and prepares it for the learning. All of these things, all of these things fit together. The gospel is meaningless unless there's action involved. You can preach all you want, but if you can't actually engage with people where they are, then the preaching is meaningless. But within a community, you can have people who are engaged with those who are in need, and you can have those who are growing and learning, and you could have those who are thinking new thoughts we've never thought before, but may inspire us later. All of these are important gifts, and none of them can be left behind. Um, yeah, Paul made that, makes that point well. He made it before, frankly, um, in, the chap in, in, just in yesterday's reading, uh, just that there are many gifts in one spirit. Um, but here I think he is making that plea for us to, to appreciate the gifts that may not be our gifts. Well, let's be honest. We do that sometimes, right? I know one of my gifts is preaching. And so I really enjoy a good preacher and I value a good preacher. Um, the... I don't want to, if I want to tell you what my gift, what my gifts aren't, but there are things that aren't necessarily my gifts, and I don't necessarily appreciate them in others as well as I could, because I don't know the 
the effort that goes into them and I don't live vicariously through them watching them live out that that gift whatever that gift may be um and I think Paul is inviting me to recognize that that just because I'm a hand doesn't mean I can't appreciate an elbow and even if I don't quite appreciate an elbow, I need to know that the hand without the elbow is not connected to the body. Right? So I think Paul is doing that, and he's doing it playfully. And, and I sometimes struggle with Paul having a sense of humor, because he doesn't seem to be... I mean, we've read, if you've been doing this with me for a while, we've read Genesis together and, and, and Exodus, and there is some real humor in there. And we've read the Gospels, and there's some real jokes I, I, that I, I have pushed for that, saying, no, no you, you need to see the humor in this. Um, because, trust me, the people who first heard it laughed at it. Uh, I am less inclined to do that with Paul, because Paul always seems so very serious, and yet... And yet, I can see the children and even the adults smirking. Well, if the whole body were an eye, then where would the hearing be? And you can see people going like, oh my God, man, just a great big eye. That would, how would it get around? What would it do? I'd imagine, you know, if it were, it, where, if it was just a big ear, then where would, or if it was, yeah, if it was a big ear, then where would the sense of smell be? <laughs> and then it's kind of funny, and then you're starting to think about that, and I think you're starting to chuckle, because I think he rides that, he rides that into the whole thing about the, the weaker, indispensable parts of the body, right? I mean, he goes on to say, The eye cannot say to the hand, I have no need of you. Nor again can the head to the feet, I have no need of you. On the contrary, he then says, The members of the body that seem to be weaker are indispensable. Well, let's think about that for a minute. The ones that seem weaker... Well, I rely a lot on my sense of sight, my sense of vision. Uh, and if Paul were speaking to me, I could immediately start to think, yeah, but I know my vision has faded since I was a younger man. And I know that it's just a sharp blow to my eyes and I would lose my sight. And, 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 and for me, that's, indis that's indispensable. Now, there's an ableism going on in that, and there may be with Paul too, because in fact... You don't necessarily have to see to have a complete life. But for people who do see, you very often think, yeah, that's, that, that's indispensable. Uh, the thing is that, that we're fragile. Um, my knees are fragile. Always have been, frankly. Um, and, 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 but, but, but for me, the way I live, in my mind, they're, they're indispensable. Um, these things that I rely on that I can't imagine living without are actually very vulnerable. Um, and I think Paul is saying that so that we might recognize perhaps that the vulnerable within our community are also indispensable. Because I think it's possible in 2023, and I suspect it was possible in the first century, to go like, oh, I'm tired of the vulnerable people. Why are we doing this? Why do we have to slow everything down for one person? Comes up in my community every now and again. Why do we all have to eat gluten-free bread when we celebrate communion? I mean, come on, it's only a couple people. They could just skip it, right? The idea of being a community is where you make the efforts that everybody has equal access to all the experiences of the faith. You make the effort. You don't necessarily have to beat yourself down for not succeeding, but you make the effort. I hear Paul doing that, saying, yeah. So think of the vulnerable members. Think of them as indispensable. Because so if they're indispensable, you make, well, you, you, you make every effort, don't you? I'll wear knee pads. Uh, I'll wear supports for my knees if I'm going to be doing something where my knees will be particularly vulnerable. Right? I make every effort because I recognize that vulnerability. Um, what do I do within my own faith community? What do I do within my own community? Whether that's my family, my friends, or what is it? Do I, do I see the one who is vulnerable and exclude them? 
mock them, patronize them? Or do I recognize them as indispensable? Hmm. Paul's preaching to me <laughs> right now, whether he knows it or not. Um, yeah. But I say, I, I think he's doing this with, with, with a slight smirk. Because then he goes on and says, And those members of the body that we think less honorable, we clothe with great honorable, honor. And, and our less respectable members are treated with greater respect. Whereas our more respectable members do not need this. So I don't know where your mind goes when you hear that, but I guess I'm a six-year-old boy at heart, you know. And so it's, I go, <laughs> he's talking about my bum. Uh, he's talking about things that I cover. Um, my head, which is very respectable, it needs no adornment. I don't have to wear a hat or anything. You get to see it right there. There it is. Um, boom. But um, but there are parts of my body that I wear pants over in fact i i wear two pairs of pants over them and some of them are very fancy they're really nice pants i put nothing on my head nothing to adorn my head um but boy just get a look at my pants um and i know that's silly but i think paul means that to be silly i think that the kids who hear this are laughing i think that the adults are laughing inside of themselves and Paul is also making the point, again, about the vulnerable, we take care of them, but also those parts of our bodies or, as I, or our lives even, uh, of which we, um, we do not brag in, in, in polite company. We also, but we, do, we don't ignore them. We treat them carefully and gently whether we're talking about hygiene. We dress them well, whether we're talking about fashion. Um, I think Paul is very subtly, cleverly making us laugh and telling us to pay attention to the vulnerable. Pay attention to the vulgar. Think about the people about whom, oh God, we never, if I was ever telling you about my church, I would never tell you about so-and-so. Oh God, they're in such an embarrassment. And Paul's encouraging me to, no, no, to hold that person in higher regard and, and to be a little more careful. Think of them as essential, but also think of them as um, deserving honor. Right? Um, and I think he's doing it tongue-in-cheek. I don't know how funny he really is and how good he is at it, but... I think he's having um, a smile. I think he's laughing. Um, but the point is still made. And then he goes on to say, and God has arranged the body, given the greater honor to the inferior member. <laughs> well, talk to any of my friends. Okay, so this is the weird thing. And I can remember this as a kid. Uh, when I went to school, um, and when I went to public school, so, you know, that's grade, kindergarten to grade six. Um, every year the, uh, the optional insurance plan would come around and boy, oh boy, we, the, we boys particularly loved it. We all gather around and looked at it because you, if you signed up for the optional insurance plan, I mean, you paid something, but there it was it laid out in black and white. If you lost a finger, you got this much money. If you lost a leg, you, your payout was this much money. And we would read that and as kids, we'd all get together and go, okay, so... Mikey's left-handed, so if he lost a right arm, we'd get that much money. And Norm, well, he could lose his left arm because he's right. And then we'd get that much money. And what and Mike does, and I mean, Jeff doesn't need a leg. So and, oh, what about my thumb? What, how much would I give my thumb for? And we would go through all that, and we would dismember ourselves in our imagination and figure out how much money we could make. However, even at the age of eight, nine, and ten, there certainly was a part of the body that we would never put up for auction. We were never allowing that to be detached from our bodies. Told you, I'm a six-year-old boy at heart. Um, but so is Paul. Because he's to me, he's done exactly that. He's gotten us together, and we're all look, looking over that. It was on green paper, I remember. Um, and we were looking over the optional insurance forms. Uh, and Paul's going, yeah, so you look over the optional insurance forms. 
So uh, that less respectable part, I don't know, that's worth a lot of money, isn't it? That part you're not supposed to talk about, that's worth a lot of money. Look how much you get for that. Way more than you get for a thumb. More than you get for an arm, even. Right? So, um, yeah, funny. <laughs> Times may change, but uh, but six-year-olds never do. Uh, and I'm sure there is a, a, an equivalent that's less binary than the one I'm using, but that's that's the perspective I've always I grew up with. So that's sort of how I see it. Um, when all is said and done, what Paul really wants us to get, and he sums it up beautifully, if one member suffers, all suffer together with it. And if one member is honored, then all rejoice together with it. I could spend some time wondering about that today. Within my community, whether I'm talking about my faith community or my family, my community of friends, if one suffers, do we all suffer with them? Or do we shut them out? Because really, I don't want to hear about it all the time. You're bringing me down. If one member is honored, do we all celebrate with them? Are we all thrilled? Do we all feel that as a whole, all of us are being honored? Our whole community, our humanity, that's all being honored? Or uh, is there a little bit of us going like, well, why couldn't that be me? I... I, I, I I do great things too. For me, Paul is remarkably human and I find him very frustrating for that sometimes because his foibles, his failings, his shortcomings to me just seem, seem to be on display at times. And other times he's brilliant uh, and he says things that just like, wow, I had not thought of that before. Thank you for that. Um, and, and, and in between all of that... His foibles, <laughs> excuse me, his failures and his successes always on display is his humanity. He gets what it is to be human. I don't know how happy he is, but he gets it. And so I think he knows that I need to be reminded. I think he knows that the Corinthians need to be reminded that if one member suffers, then all suffer together with it. And if one member is honored, then all rejoice together with it. Isn't that really what justice is? That sense that we are all, all of us, all of humanity, that we are in this together. And so when any of us are suffering, then we are all suffering. We can't just cut ourselves off from it and say, oh, it just doesn't affect me. I mean, justice is when we all recognize that, surely. Justice is when we recognize that someone's success does not detract from us, does not make us less. And so we can celebrate with them and be glad with them. Yeah, I'm taking this passage maybe a little more personally than, <laughs> than I should. Uh, or maybe I'm taking it exactly as personally as I need to. But I'm going to leave it there with you right now. Uh, and see what you think about about these words, because I, I think there's a lot of ways to go. Um, I do believe Paul is being funny in the middle. He, he's intentionally humorous. Uh, and I do believe that what he's really building up to is that that last line that I read. If one member suffers, all suffer together with it. If one member is honored, all rejoice together with it. We're in this together. I believe that's what Paul's after, but... There's so many little things going on in this and you may pick up something else and I hope that you do. So, um, so let me just offer a prayer and then we'll, we'll get on it, won't we? Let us pray. <sighs> Loving God, here I am, a member of the body. Here we are all members of the body. God, help us hear each other and see each other that we might know how it is that we come together to do your work, to reveal your word and your love. God, we ask that our wondering today help us in that revelation, that it aid us in hearing your word and recognizing how we all fit together as the body of Christ. We pray through the Holy Spirit in Jesus' name.
Amen. And that's enough of me today, but I look forward to checking in with you tomorrow and we'll see what happens next because I got a little tiny bit of chapter 12 to finish up tomorrow and I've saved it because I think it maybe can stand on its own. Uh, anyway, until I see you, God bless you. Please know that God sees you and that God loves you, that God knows you exactly as you are and that God's love moves through you. You are an appropriate conduit for God's love. You are you are an appropriate receiver of God's love. So please be loved and love and know that you matter. God bless you. We'll see you tomorrow.